Recording will start soon. Okay, recording is started. Good morning, everyone. Let's take a moment to pray, and then we will start with the class, and I'm sure the others will join us. We went over by a few minutes um, in the earlier hour, so uh, students will be a little delayed in connecting, but let's pray and start. Could somebody pray with us, please, this morning, and we'll start. Okay, who wants to pray? Go ahead, please. Thank you, Lord, Father God, we praise you, we give you glory, Lord, Father. Father, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, O Lord, Father, you have given us this time, O Lord, Father, to learn from your word, O Lord, Father, Almighty, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, as your word said, O Lord, that, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, Father God, you have blessed us with all the heavenly blessings in Christ Jesus, O Lord, Father. Almighty, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, as pastor, O Lord, Father, teaches us to, O Lord, Father, walk in supernatural life, O Lord, Father, for the life what you have blessed us, O Lord, Father, on this earth is different. It's heavenly, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. We are no more of this world, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, but we as the children, O Lord, Father, shall glorify your name in our works, in our acts, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. Father God, here we are to be equipped, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, that your glory shall shine through each of our lives, O Lord, Father. May we glory into your name alone, O Lord, Father. We bless your name, we praise your name. We ask, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, for knowledge, wisdom, understanding, that we'll be able to grasp everything that we taught to us, O Lord, Father, Lord, and use it for your mighty works, O Lord, Father, to be showcased. Father God, we commit pastor into your hand and each one of us, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. Help us to draw from your word, O Lord, Father, Lord Jesus. It shall bear fruit unto us, O Lord, Father, for your glory alone. In mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. So welcome, everybody, to this class on uh, Keys to Supernatural Ministry. Uh, just to quickly... Uh, review where we are. We started this course by talking about the invitation that has been given to us um, by the Lord Jesus Christ to partner with him in the supernatural. He said, you know, Jesus himself made that available to us. Then uh, we talked about the possibility why every believer and, uh, you know, the, the possibility that every believer can engage in the supernatural. We talked about sonship glory. We all have that as sons and daughters. We talked about the power of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the authority that's vested in us through the name of Jesus. Then we went into the third section, which we spent most of our time so far, which is the keys to the supernatural. What are the keys that you and I can operate and use? In the supernatural, we went through these eight keys. I'll just uh, go on again, reproduce them in the chat here, just for uh, helping us recall. Uh, we talked about understanding the realm of the spirit. We talked about faith, the power of the word, renewed mind, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God's presence and glory, number six. Then last week, we covered uh, seven and eight which was proclamation and action. And eighth was persistence. So these are different keys. So what I want to impress on our hearts is that God will move us to use any of these keys at any point in time or any combination of these keys to release the supernatural through us. Okay. Now, the first one is a very generic one, understand the realm of the spirit. I think that's, uh, that, that, that applies, that's like, you know, it applies to everything. But the remaining seven that we talk about, faith, the word, mind, renewed mind, the anointing, presence and glory, proclamation, action, persistence. These are, you know, different keys that, that God would use us at different situations. So you and I need to know uh, how to address a certain situation. 
Uh, I just want to emphasize a little bit on the last one, persistence, before we start the next section that we're getting into today uh, is talking about personal preparation. But uh, before we get into that, I, I just want to emphasize one thing is about this whole aspect of um, laboring in birth or the King James or the, yeah, the, the King James would use the phrase travail. So the word travail is like an old English word, uh, travailing in birth. Uh, but you know, the New King James, other, other translations, the versions would use laboring in birth. And that is an aspect perhaps the that, that many of us you know may not be familiar with uh, in in the in 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 the release of the supernatural you know we are usually you know we want we look at faith and the power of the word the renewed mind and uh, the anointing and the presence of glory and proclamation action we see these things happen and uh, they're very powerful and, and it's wonderful but in the persistent side there are things where we have to travail in birth or labor in birth to see happen. And uh, you find, for instance, in Galatians chapter 4, and the classic scriptures on these, um, Galatians 4 and verse 19, uh, Paul is uh, writing to the Galatians. He says, you know, my little children for whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. Right? So he's writing to the Galatians. says, I, I, I am laboring in birth again. That means it's the second time, meaning he did it the first time and he's doing it again. For what? for Christ to be formed in you. So here he's talking about this great work of seeing people born into the kingdom and having Jesus formed in their lives. But he's associating it to a process of laboring in birth. So this great miracle, you know, we, Many times we think of salvation, we think of, yeah, you know, it's an instantaneous miracle, boom, you know, people get saved and, and they're in the kingdom and, you know, they begin a journey. But here Paul is giving us a little, a little different perspective. He's saying, look, I am laboring in birth for Christ to be formed in you. And, and he uses the word again, meaning, look, I have to do this again, second time. So there is this part where certain miracles come through this process of laboring in birth. Sometimes, uh, or I would say, you know, let's take the example of uh, seeing somebody saved. Sometimes it's simple, like, you know, you just deal with the things of the spirit. You say, and I take authority over every spirit that's uh, oppressing this person, that's every deceiving spirit, uh, everything that is disturbing their minds, I command you to leave. And, you know, you speak this word, uh, uh, and then, you know, they commit their lives to Christ. They, they respond and they get saved. And you're like, wow, that's wonderful. Now, so you've, uh, you know, you've used the power of the word. You've, uh, you know, uh, you've, um, so I'm moved out of the anointing and things have happened. But then it doesn't happen like that in everybody's case. In some situations, you'll find that for people to be brought to a place where they can receive Christ, somebody else has to labor in birth. The miracle is the same. It's the miracle of salvation. But how it happens, the, the, the key that is used, if, you, if you're using our language here, the key that is used to see that person come to salvation is different. In one case, somebody took authority, somebody you know, spoke the word and they were free to receive, they just felt, they responded, they received Christ. In another case, somebody had to labor in birth. 
and not only for salvation. There may be other situations where you, uh, you and I have to labor in birth, or the old English is travail in birth, until you see that result. And this is where prayer and intercession comes in. You know, this is where prayer and intercession comes. So some miracles, some supernatural things, deliverances, and will come through this process of persistence, laboring in birth. Now, there is a classic scripture again in, 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 in Isaiah, which is of, used often in relation to this. And it's, uh, it's interesting, and it's in Isaiah 66. And uh, verses 7 and 8, let me just, uh, because uh, I mean, Isaiah 66, 7 and 8, you know, um, it's talking about how, uh, uh, in this case, it's a supernatural birth. Like, you know, God is saying, uh, as, as soon as, uh, before her labor came, she gave birth to a male child. And who has heard of such a thing? Verse 8, shall a nation be born at once. It's talking about how supernaturally, is, you know, Israel came into existence. Uh, but, at the end of verse 8, there's something stated. As soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Now, Zion, of course, refers to the people of God under the old covenant, Israel. But the word Zion is also used to refer to, in the New Testament, to the people of God in the New Testament. So we can take what has been spoken of Zion in the Old Testament and Carefully, we can apply it to the church and the New Testament because the church in the New Testament is also referred to as Zion, and we see that in First Peter chapter two and um, um, verse six, and also in Hebrews twelve. Uh, uh, um, give you the exact verse: Hebrews twelve and um, verse. 22, right? So First Peter 2, 6, and uh, uh, in Hebrews 12, 22, we see the word Zion used in relation to the church. So what do we learn from Isaiah 66, verse 8? As soon as Zion, you can replace the word church there. As soon as the church labored in birth, or as soon as, soon as soon as Zion travailed, she gave birth. That means there is this, this whole aspect of the church entering into a labor and birth happening. Now, what God is telling us is he'll make it happen fast. But there is this aspect of laboring in birth, even for the church. So you see it in the way Paul mentioned it in his letter to Galatians, saying, I'm laboring in birth for you until Christ is formed in you. And Isaiah is telling us, as soon as the sign travailed, she brought forth. So here's the key that I just want to share under number eight, persistence, that there are some supernatural things that you and I are going to see happen which require this laboring in birth. This laboring in birth is really us travailing or engaging in prayer with the Holy Spirit. It's almost like the believer becomes the womb of God to give birth to the purpose of God or a collective community, the church, becomes the womb of God to give birth to the work of God but it takes place through this laboring in birth in prayer and with the seed of the word of God. So in some situations, if you're saying, God, why is the miracle not happening? You know, you've, we've done the other things and you know, we've, we've had faith and we are operating in a renewed mind. 
uh, we are speaking the word and um, you know we know and we we have the anointing and the presence the glory and all of that and if the supernatural work the miracle is still not happening then i want you to consider point eight persistence and under point eight i want you to consider specifically laboring in birth because sometimes the supernatural work will take place when somebody labors in birth. Now, it could be for your personal life, you know, something in your own personal life, or it could be something you do for somebody else. You labor in birth through your prayer, through your intercession, until so. Paul's case, until Christ is formed in you, or until a person is saved, or until that healing is, comes through, or until you know the situation changes, whatever, you labor in birth. Okay, so I just wanted to add that part uh, to uh, number eight. Uh, does uh, everybody understand this, or uh, is it okay? Okay. All right, thanks. Uh, I'll see your comments. I just want to make sure you understand this before I change and go to the next section. Any questions on this? Okay. So remember this. Some things you have to labor in birth. Just go in to your prayer closet. Pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Take the scriptures that are related to that matter because the scriptures are the seed. You are the womb of God. Your praying is that laboring in birth and you just engage until the miracle happens. There is no, you know, there is no formula that will happen in two days. But it just says, as soon as Zion travailed, she gave birth. So as soon as you get into that travailing or laboring in birth, you will give birth. But, uh, you know, I don't know that process, whether it's, I know in the natural, you know, natural labor, I mean, natural birth process, usually nine months, and that's a fixed thing. But in the spirit, there's no, like, you know, nine month thing. It's just, you do it and let the miracle happen. Okay. All right. Now we're going to, so having shared, having understood that there, these are different keys and God will call upon you to use these different keys at any point in time, okay? Not every miracle happens because of that same key, okay? That's, you must keep in mind. Uh, uh, so if, if one key doesn't work, hey, just try another one. Just ask the Holy Spirit, you know, what should I do now? And he might move upon you to say, hey, use this key, you know? And so there is no formula to the supernatural. We just know that here are some of the common ways or keys through which God unlocks the supernatural uh, in our lives or in the lives of people or when we're ministering to. We should be aware of the keys so that we can cooperate with God and be led by the Holy Spirit and know how to minister uh, you know, in different situations. And, and don't get discouraged if one particular key is not giving the result. You know, just just say, God, what what is the other way? Maybe God wants to use something else. He, maybe he wants to use a co certain combination you know, of these keys to cause a miracle. Okay, so uh, be open, be sent. Mostly, you know, most important is just be led by God because God will tell you, this is, this is the way, just go after it like this. And you and I must ask God, Lord, what must I do to see the miracle happen? You know, and, and he will lead us, okay? But just be familiar, be aware of these other keys. So let's move on to the next section, which is, you know, what can we do as individuals to prepare ourselves for the supernatural? You know, and uh, this is uh, uh, section three, uh, personal uh, preparation. Right? And I'm going to just, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe 
yeah, go, I will go through this and I'll, of course, I will share the document with you. Uh, none of these things are, uh, you know, um, surprising or, oh, wow, this is something different. I haven't heard of it. But uh, these are things that you and I do as part of our lifestyle, uh, as part of our preparation. And what we need to do is just keep doing these, you know, in an increasing measure and, and just make sure that these are in your life because these are the things that are necessary in order to be used by God. Okay. So what am I going to cover? Uh, I'll just uh, list it out. First is we're going to talk about intimacy with God. Second, we're going to talk about identity. That is, we must be established in our identity in Christ. Third is we must move with the compassion of God. So we need to be compassionate people. Uh, fourth, I'm going to talk about his holiness or our cons personal consecration to God. Fifth, uh, I will talk about our walking in dominion and uh, authority. Uh, sixth, how about growing in the anointing? Uh, on seventh is about receiving impartation from others. Uh, eighth is uh, being in a place of inner wholeness uh, because in the areas where uh, we are not whole emotionally, uh, we are limited. Uh, uh, we cannot uh, express God in those areas. Um, then nine is humility and then Last one is learning and expanding, okay? So um, these are the things I'm gonna cover here as part of our personal preparation. Uh, uh, let me just begin with the first one, which is uh, our personal intimacy with God, right? So in our personal intimacy with God, uh, let me put it in the chat here. So we're talking about personal intimacy with God. That's the first point, okay? So what, what can I do to prepare myself to be used by God in the supernatural? And these are things that we are going to keep on going after in our lives. You know, and uh, personally, you know, I've, uh, just because of the level of responsibility here and this, in the church and all of that, uh, it's become, you know, I'm just speaking my heart to you. And I just become so busy. And um, and, I, and I just came, okay, God, you know, uh, I need to give up a lot of work that I'm doing in the church um, so that I can focus more on moving into spiritual things. So, for instance, you know, there's... There's so much of work going on in our IT team, huge amounts of work, and Tarun knows a little bit. Some of you know, some of you are involved. Uh, just huge amounts of work in the uh, IT space. And so I was like, God, we need a head of IT, and I just want to give up all this. You know, Somebody will drive that. And uh, then there's this whole, uh, the operation side of the church, because there's so many different, things happening. So I just God, we need somebody who will just I will run the church for me. I don't want to be involved in any of it anymore. And then there's the publication side, uh, the books, the and now we have to resume printing. And now that, now that the lockdown's lifted, we can get back to printing and mailing and you know all the, the things that need to be done with publications. The digital distribution, the audio books that need to be generated and distributed all oh, this just huge amounts of work in the publication side so just like that so there's just so many so many things happening so I, I just began to pray I said God I want to get I want to come out of all of this uh, it's too much and I want to focus more on this you know the things that I should be doing as a spiritual leader which is the spiritual things uh, and not be involved in all these things so basically what we're in the process of disappointing people uh, just giving up all these things, just letting people take over. Uh, so that this one, number one, the intimacy with God, uh, at least for me and the pastoral team, that should be 
the focus, you know. Uh, but then intimacy with God is an intentional thing, meaning I intentionally need to give up all these things. I mean, I enjoy doing these things. I enjoy, uh, I enjoy technology, uh, and I enjoy, you know, running an organization with excellence. Uh, I enjoy, you know, the I enjoy all the work. But then, at some point, you need to say, God, that's not what I should be doing. I need to be doing more here, you know, because we need to see more and more of the power of God uh, being released. So that's kind of the transition I am making right now. And I think uh, we are in a place where we can do that, where I can actually get away from church work and let others handle it. And uh, we're bringing in new people, you know, hiring new people, interviewing them so they can take over the church and, the running of the church and running of uh, the various aspects of the church. In order that we focus on intimacy with God. So that's the first key. First key, you know, is personal preparation. Is intimacy with God. The, to be in that place where God can work through us. Now, how do we build intimacy with God? It's through personal worship, uh, meditation, God's word, confession of God's word, prayer and fasting. You know, these five disciplines. Now, this, you know, uh, when I share these things, please don't uh, uh, take them as uh, laws. Okay, we don't. We are not living under law. We are under the Spirit, right? We are under grace. So please don't. Uh, uh, think of these as, okay, you know, pastors giving us rules to live by. <laughs> That's not the point. Uh, all of these things, you know, worship, meditation, confession, prayer, fasting, should come uh, just out of love. But it should come out of our love for God, our pursuit of God, our, our desire for God, right? So don't do it as a rule. That, that, that would put us under law, right? But do it out of love for oh God. But this place of intimacy is very important for all of us. Uh, we know, right, in Acts chapter 6, the apostles said, you know, we should not leave uh, the word of God in prayer to serve tables. Now, as a leader, as a pastor, especially if you are leading an organization, sometimes you have to serve tables because there's nobody else to serve the tables, right? Or maybe you can't afford to have other higher people to serve the tables. So you serve the tables and then you go and you pray and spend time with the word. You do everything. Uh, but then there comes a time when you say, look, I can leave the serving of the tables to other people. Uh, there are people who will do it and they'll do it well. And so you just leave it to the others and you choose to go and focus on prayer and the word. That's the place of intimacy with God. And for all of us, we need to do that. Okay, now um, let me just share, you know, something that, and again, I, I'm looking back in my life. Um, Anita asks about the you know, you know, developing intimacy. Uh, now I, I'm, I'm going to just share a little bit about my early age, early days. Um, but don't, you know, don't try to make it a, uh, a rule in your life. It's just what happened in my life. So, um, and I'll tell you how I do it now compared to those days. But in the early days, um, you know, uh, uh, as a student, I didn't have any, hardly any responsibility. That everything was taken care of. You know, you didn't have to go to work. You didn't have to earn your money. You didn't have to pay your bills. Uh, everything was taken care of. Uh, and all you had to do was go to school and come. So in those days, uh, I'm talking uh, about, you know, 13 to college years. Um, what I would do is, so initially when I started reading my Bible, I started by reading five minutes, 10 minutes, but very quickly the time became 15 minutes, um, half an hour, one hour. 
So eventually in those days, what I did was I kept time 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. as my time with God. And uh, so every day my goal was to wake up a little before 4 o'clock, uh, make a big cup of tea. Everybody is sleeping at home and uh, I'll make myself a big mug of tea. And I'll get into my little room, my where I had a study room. And uh, I'd just be in it from 4 a.m. till 7 a.m. No, nobody to disturb me. Uh, and uh, we'll just spend time with God. Uh, spend about an hour and a half in prayer and confession of the word. An hour and a half in uh, meditation of God's word and studying the word. So I just divided the time, you know, one and a half hours, which was more of prayer, worship, confession. One of us was meditation, reading and studying God's word. So that's how the three hours was divided. And I just did that, you know, as part of my life. And nobody told me like, you have to do this or anything. It was just something that's spontaneous. And then on the weekends, on Saturdays, uh, I would go, uh, those days we used to attend a Methodist church. Uh, so I'd go to the Methodist church and I would just spend the whole day Saturday in the church. Uh, they had a separate building. I just, I just go in one of, into one of those rooms and uh, yeah, usually I would be there like 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., uh, um, 3 or 4 p.m. Um, just divide that time in prayer and in the study of the word. And then at... I think it was at four o'clock or something, uh, I did a Bible study. So people would come and I would just uh, conduct a Bible study. And then by we'd finish up by 5.30 and then I'd get back home. So that, that used to be, you know, during the school days from my eighth grade to my 12th grade in school. Uh, that's kind of my, that used to help me my early days. But remember those days I didn't have any responsibility. You know, I didn't, I wasn't like leading an organization or uh, there's no, no other than school, there was no responsibility. So it was pretty easy to make all the time uh, to spend in prayer, spend in the word and minister to people. But it was basically spent in intimacy with God, you know, in worship, meditation, confession of the word, prayer and fasting. That's how you... Uh, developing intimacy with God. Now these days things are quite different uh, because uh, there's so much of responsibility, so much of work going on. Uh, so I spend my time in the morning and then I would also take time off during the day, whenever I can. I just, just you know, uh, spend time in prayer, uh, try to keep many, as much as possible Saturdays seeking God. Now, some Saturdays we have weekend schools, which we will be starting up back in November. So even Saturdays become busy because we run weekend schools. We have other things happening like membership class or other ministries are doing different things on Saturdays. But uh, I intentionally, this time, this phase of life, because of all the responsibility, uh, I have to keep my time in the morning and divide my time between time in the morning and then sometimes during the day I would take off an hour, maybe two hours just to go and pray. And then I would keep try to keep as much as possible my Saturdays free from engagement so that I could spend extra time in just prayer and meditation. So now it's a little bit more fluid. In my early days, it was very structured morning, every morning, four to seven, nobody disturbs me. Saturdays, nobody disturbs me. It was okay. These days, it's a little bit more fluid, meaning I, I just have to flow with the various things that happen and make the time to, you know, seek God and, and uh, focus on Him. So it's challenging. Uh, it's more challenging now than it was in the early days because of the responsibility. So, um, but 
And I'm just sharing that personally because this is how life is. You know, sometimes we think, wow, ministry is so nice. Play till you get into it. And then you realize, oh, so it's so busy. I'd prefer life without ministry <laughs> uh, because you can have more time with God. Uh, but anyway, let me just say this. So uh, personally, I'm in that time of wanting to make the transition away from running the church, away from leading the you know church in all these areas to focusing more on intimacy with God uh, so I could spend more time doing these things, which is uh, worship and meditation and prayer and fasting and so on. Okay, so that's the same thing I want to share with all of us. First person preparation is intimacy with God. Scripturally, you see, first of all, you see Jesus. If there was anyone who was a minister of God, who didn't need to spend time with God, I think we'd all vote for Jesus, right? We'll say, well, there's one person who doesn't need to spend time with God. That's Jesus. He's the eternal word who became man. But so unusual. Jesus took time to be alone with the Father. One of the scriptures that really inspired me in my early days to do what I did was Mark 1 and verse 35. Uh, when I read that verse, I said, oh, I, I need to do that. It says, you know, and he rising up a great while before day went to a solitary place and there prayed. That's the King James Version. Um, so basically, talking about Jesus, he woke up early in the morning he went to a quiet place and he prayed. And that really struck, you know, stuck with me. So, wow, if Jesus did that, then I need to do it. And then you find many, many examples you know, where in the Gospels where Jesus sent the multitudes away and he went and prayed. So the very person that we say who doesn't need to pray is the one who is making time in the busyness of his day to go and pray. And in fact, Luke 6 and verse 12, it records the instance when Jesus went away to a mountain and he continued all night in prayer to God. So this is like, wow, he's spending the whole night in prayer. So, Jesus is our greatest example of intimacy with God. He went and was alone with the Father. So part of our personal preparation is this, being alone with God, our intimacy with God. And Jesus put it like this in John 15, right? He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, the same bears much fruit. So you see that bearing much fruit is coming out of that place of abiding in him and he in us, that place of connectivity or you know intimacy with the Lord. So sometimes we think, well, much fruit comes with a lot of good strategy. And I'm not against good ministry strategy. We will learn about it and we will use it. Sometimes we think ministry comes out of you know, fruitfulness. Much fruit comes out of, you know, a lot of work. I'm not against work. The Apostle Paul said, you know, uh, I labored more abundantly than all the other apostles. So he worked hard. There is a place for hard work. But everything has to first 
there's something that supersedes all that, which is this place of intimacy with God. So you and I need to constantly, you know, take time away from our busyness um, to be with God. And what do we do in those in that time of intimacy with God? Well, we spend time in personal worship. That means you just worship Him. You know, uh, however you want to do it. You know, you could, uh, if you're a musician, you could play your instrument and sing and worship Him. Or uh, if you're like me, I don't play an instrument and I don't sing. So I just, meaning in private, I can sing. <laughs> so I can listen to some music and I sing along with that. Or am I just worship Him with words? Um, I can then we also meditate in the word, you read the word, you meditate, let the word get into you. Uh, you spend time in speaking the word in the presence of God. You spend time in prayer, in prayer and praying uh, in tongues. And uh, you spend time in fasting. So these are things you do while you're alone with God. In your intimacy with God, building your relationship with God. And out of that, out of that, you and I can minister. Is that okay? Any questions on this first, per, first point of personal preparation, which is intimacy with God? Okay, everybody's quiet. So that's, at least if we were all in class, I could look at your faces and <laughs> I know what's going on. Right now, I don't know. Uh, okay. Sir, uh, contemplating how to build up more intimate relationship when we are hearing this. Thank you. Okay, 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 thank you. Right, right. And, and these things are deep. So we 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 have to use the card. We 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 listen and then we try to process them. These are things that are not taught in church, they are not in Bible study, so we we listen and sometimes we even can't know even how to ask. Just we listen, we ask the Lord to help us understand them and be able to apply them. Okay. Okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah, I see all your comments in the chat. So, yeah. So, so yeah, uh, Sri Kumar, this whole thing is, you know, we would refer to it formally as quiet time or time alone with God or yeah so yeah you could call it quiet time or you could call it um, you know time in your closet or time in your people use different language um, you know, some people call it uh, their personal time with God or their personal altar or yeah different language but I think it's that place of you and I being alone with God, having that place of uh, re building our relationship with Him. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So, I will just place it before you. I'll place these things before you and uh, each one of us you know, see how we can grow personally in our relationship with God. All I would say is uh, don't make it uh, a law. Uh, don't do it out of, you know, a rule. Do it out of love for God, right? Just you're seeking God. And, you know, our intimacy with God affects our anointing, the anointing that we carry, which we will talk about a little later. You and I cannot have anointing on our lives if you don't have a place of intimacy with God.
So many times we say, God, I want to have the anointing. Well, there's something that we must have before the anointing comes on us. What is it? This place of intimacy with God. Now, there will be times, there will be times, and God is so gracious when, uh, even when we have not been, you know, very strong in our intimacy with God, spending time with God, the anointing will come. But don't take too much advantage of that. Because the tendency in many people is, hey, anointing is there, whether I pray or not, anointing is coming. So what happens? People stop praying. People stop spending time with God. What happens? You'll find the anointing is no longer there. And then what happens is we get into playing games. What do you mean by that? It means we start imitating the anointing. Because we know how to behave under the anointing, right? We, are, we know we act a certain way, we speak a certain way, we... So, hey, I'll just do it. Whether the anointing is there or not, I just act. And that's a very dangerous place to be, okay? Now, we'll talk about that a little late when we come to that point. But remember, from this place of intimacy comes the flow of everything. Jesus put it like this in John 7, uh, 37 to 39. He said, he who is thirsty... Let him come to me and drink. And out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So see the sequence. This is John chapter 7, 37 and 38. He was thirsty. Come and drink. And out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So if you are going to have rivers of living water flowing out of your innermost being, what must you do before that? You must be thirsty, go and drink. That means, go where? Go to Jesus. He was thirsty. Let him come to me and drink. So I go to Jesus. So Lord, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for you. Thirsty for your presence. Thirsty for your power. Thirsty for your work. I'm thirsty for you. And then you go and drink. So it's almost like, I mean, I'm just using language here. Your tank is being filled up as you drink. Then what happens? Rivers out of your innermost being, that means out of your tank that is full because you've been drinking of the Lord, out of your innermost being flows rivers of living water. But if I have not been drinking, now I may have a reservoir, I may have a reserve, so some flow will happen, but soon that rivers of living water may end up becoming a trickle. Right? So we have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, Rose, that uh, rivers of living water is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit flowing out of our lives. Right? So that whole water and river is referring to the Holy Spirit. Because in John 7, 39, it says, This he spoke concerning the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. So that water in the river is, 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 is symbolic or representing the person of the Holy Spirit. But what must we do? We must go and drink. That means there is an infilling or an inflow of that. And then there is an outflow. So that inflow happens as we go to Jesus in our 
life of intimacy in our quiet time or in our prayer closet or in our personal time, you know, and with God, you're drinking. And then out of that comes the flow of rivers of living water. So I want to, I want to leave us with that. That's the first personal preparation and uh, I cannot overemphasize, I know I've just said it in like maybe 20, 30 minutes, but uh, I cannot overemphasize this part, intimacy with God. You and I, us taking time to personally seek God, whether it's, you know, in, and there are different ways, like we said, in worship, in the word, in prayer and fasting and confession of the word, in, all of these things, all of these things are just us seeking God and being intimate with God. Okay. So there has to be an inflow. If there has to be an outflow. So go to him and drink. Go to him and drink. And then there will be those rivers of living water flowing out. All right, we'll build on this next week. Any questions before we dismiss? Any questions on this? Okay. So I wanna encourage you, uh, if you've never done it before, and and don't this, don't do this as a rule. Do this out of love. Try and spend extended hours in God's presence. Maybe an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. Keep pushing it. You know, five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours. Okay, keep pushing it. Just you and God. Right. But be mindful of, you know, other people in your life. If you're married, of course, you have responsibility uh, towards your spouse and your family. Um, if you're single, it's okay. You know, you know, nobody's going to bother you. But if you're married, you know, be mindful. Uh, and uh, while you are, you know, keeping things in proper order, you also find time to do this. But push it. Um, the longest I've done, I've done is like I've done eight hours just praying, eight hours in tongues, just praying eight hours in tongues. Just, you know, of course we take bathroom breaks and water breaks or tea coffee breaks. It's a short, short breaks, but that time is just spent praying, right? And you know, of course you need short breaks in between, but it's just you alone in your room praying. So do that from time to time uh, as part of your life of intimacy with God, but do it properly. Like don't offend your family members or others, just with permission and, you know, making sure that they are cared for, you go and you spend time. Okay. All right. Who wants to close in prayer today? All right. Uh, who can I? Who wants Holy to pray? Father, Holy Father, we thank you, Lord, for teaching these truths and imparting these into our lives, Father. Lord, help us, Lord, grant us the real thirst, Lord, to drink of you more and more, Father. Lord, we may spend more and more time in the presence so that we may receive the anointing. Lord, we may meditate upon your word, Father, and we drench the Lord. With your, with your anointing, with your spirit, Lord, we are drenched with your spirit and be saturated, Father, with your word and oh Lord, with your infilling, so that living waters may flow from us and others may be touched. 
to our life and to our ministry. Thank you, Lord, for teaching this verse. Lord, let it remain in every one of us, Father, throughout our life, so that we may bear good fruit in the kingdom of this world. Lord, we once again thank you for teaching this. In your name, Father, we bless the pastor for imparting these truths into our lives, Father. Lord, you see mightily and abundantly according to will of thy glory. Strengthening, Lord, in every way. Strengthening the ministry. Lord, let your name alone be glorified through his ministry and through every one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Man, thank you, Rowan. Um, God bless you. Uh, enjoy your enjoy the rest of the day. And see you soon. Bye now. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Rowan. Thank you.